Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here. Today, I have a playthrough of The Goonies, Never Say Die. This is a one versus many game. Uh, one player will play the Goondocks Master, and they will be the opponent for the other players who are uh, cooperating to accomplish different adventures. Yes, we have data and we have chunk as I've laid them out here. We have other options for familiar characters. I'll show you these in just a second. Uh, but it is an adventure game in the spirit of the Goonies. A little bit of a dungeon crawl flavor where you're going to be moving through uh, the different dungeons. The GM has the layout of the dungeon. They're going to be laying out traps and treasure and enemies uh, getting in your way. Uh, while the Goonies progress through, it is an adventure-based game. Uh, a campaign mode has nine different scenarios to play through, so there is a lot to love with Goonies. I am featuring Goonies in the One Stop Co-op Shop in the hopes that an intrepid designer or person who is interested in the game might animate the uh, GM with some kind of deck or some kind of rules for solo or cooperative so that all of us can uh, gather together, play as Goonies, and go through all the adventures together as it is the one verse many mode that comes out of the box is outstanding and I can't wait to show you a full playthrough of the first adventure. But before I do that, this is the One Stop Co-op Shop. Please check us out on the YouTubes, which you are now. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check out our streaming channel where we play the latest and the greatest, but also old favorites uh, live for you either on Tabletop Simulator or on Tabletopia. We also have a Discord channel, which is where our community meets. It is our hub. Lots and lots of great uh, cooperative game discussion, solo game discussion as well. Uh, we have a Patreon that you can contribute to. That will uh, really appreciate that. Uh, but please do not feel obligated. You can join the Discord and join the conversation for completely free. Finally, we have a podcast. We release it twice a week where we talk a lot about uh, the cooperative games that you love, including an interview with the designer about this very game. Go ahead and search the co-op One Stop Co-op Shop uh, podcast feed uh, for a little bit more information about the Goonies and so many other games. We are the One Stop Co-op Shop, your one stop for solo and cooperative gaming goodness. So where we start with explaining the game Goonies Never Say Die is, of course, with the Goonies. So then I have a two-player game laid out or a two-player, a three-player game, two players and a GM. Uh, but this game, uh, I have Data and Chunk as a potential prep. I also have options for Mouth and Sloth and Mikey. Uh, they all have different abilities, uh, depending on how you want to go about it. Some characters are fairly easy, like Chunk is a pretty straightforward character. Data has all sorts of gadgets. If you remember the original movie, you have the uh, boxing glove that comes out of his trench coat, the chattering teeth, and all sorts of gadgets. Uh, but most of the characters are fairly simple. You also have the teenagers. Uh, they are represented by cards on the side. Uh, they will help you along the way as one-shot abilities. If you wanted to play the teenagers as characters, you'd have to get the expansion. So go ahead and look out for that one. After setup, uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to choose the adventure. This is an adventure book and it has nine different scenarios. You can play each scenario as a standalone or you can play them in sequence as a campaign. The first couple of adventures of very much directly evoke the movie, but then it goes off. <laughs> it is still very Goonie-ish, but there is definitely some uh, deepening of the lore that happens. So there are going to be surprises for folks who are familiar with the Goonies lore and have always wanted to dig in a little bit further. So I'm going to show you a little bit of the book because this is going to be a secret to the players. Uh, the GM will look at Adventure 1, the Lighthouse, uh, Lighthouse Lounge. They are going to know the map, but they are going to set up uh, the start area and also read the introduction, which I have done here. This is the starting area, and there are a couple of things in here and also a passage into an unexplored area. This is a dungeon exploration game where you're going to be taking actions and discovering rooms, opening up the map, very old school <laughs> D&D-like. On your turn, each Goonie is going to take two actions. Turn order doesn't really matter, it just depends on which Goonie feels like going, uh, what is advantageous for the scenario. But let's say I wanted to go with Data. There is the Data Mini right there, look at that, adorable. <laughs> I have a couple of options, a uh, simple option I could move, but before then, 
Uh, there are going to be lots of these kind of tokens. It wouldn't be Goonies without lots and lots of searching. Uh, so then you would look on your character placard and then you would look for the relevant skill. So if I wanted to search, I would roll dice. These are custom dice. There are six sided, eight sided and 12 sided. And they are representing different levels of uh, success. So you can have one bones or two bones or no bones. That'd be terrible. <laughs> I'll get to the skull in a second. But obviously, the more size that a die has, the more chance you have for success. So since Data is fairly good at searching, he's going to roll the two bones. He is going to get a success. A success, uh, you search the pile, uh, and then you draw from an item deck. These are very, very simple items. If you get two or more successes on any of the things that you search, and you're going to find a few of these, you are going to be able to draw from the advanced deck. So this is a little bit more powerful. So you always find stuff. <laughs> it wouldn't be an adventure if you didn't find lots of stuff, right? All right. So aside from searching, we're going to go ahead and move. We can move to any unexplored area. The GM has total control over what gets revealed. So uh, if the characters are in a certain room, they all the GM kind of uh, puts the players or points the players in the right way by putting out down these explore tokens so that they can open up the map that only the GM has access to. So then we're going to move and then the GM is going to consult the book and a bet <laughs> and that comes out of the book and then the players would have to decide what they're going to do with that so then chunk is going to come in he sees that and he is a uh, loaded for bear he's ready to fight so then chunk has a little bit more advanced strength uh, but uh, not only can he use his strength to attack these wish tokens are available so that you can upgrade your dice so then you would spend your wish token, and in Chunk's case, he is able to uh, spend a wish token to upgrade two dice instead. So then he is going to roll two of the best dice against the creature, and he is going to roll one damage and a skull. Whew, what a terrible roll that is. He's going to do damage, uh, and then the skull. Whenever the skull is rolled, the GM laughs with glee. Please laugh if you're a GM. You get these skull tokens and they will be useful for the GM on the round. So it's kind of like powering up uh, the GM. Wish tokens represent the game's uh, resource management. You can use wish tokens as I just did to upgrade your offensive dice or upgrade your search or anytime you're rolling a die and using it in a proactive way, you can use your wishes. Uh, and you are, have a maximum of three per turn. You're going to be getting one each turn, and there are ways to get wishes. So the game is very much about getting wishes, using wishes, getting, losing, getting, losing. That's kind of the resource uh, flow of the game. The other thing that you could do with wish tokens is on the GM turn, the first thing that the GM is going to do is activate monsters. They're going to attack, and you can use wish tokens to block incoming damage. Anytime a Goonie uh, takes damage, that's bad, but if they take their health in damage uh, and get reduced to zero hit points, then that's even worse. Uh, it's not the end of the game. Uh, there is a condition where you will wipe the damage and keep on going, but I will show you the good thing that the GM gets when they're able to take a Goonie down in just a minute. The players are done. They've all used uh, both of their actions, and it is time for the GM to go. The GM is going to be sitting here grinning and cackling and plotting behind this really snazzy looking DM screen. Very, very uh, <laughs> old school appendix N type thing that has basically everything that you would need in order to uh, run the game, answer players questions. But I think this game does a good job of making the Goondock Master a little bit more than a facilitator. Is an actual opponent. You have the resources to be able to you know, really fight back against the players and uh, beat them down. So uh, no problem. If you win, <laughs> go for the win. Be evil. Uh, you will be able to progress in the campaign anyway. Uh, if you choose to play the campaign, the campaign has simple rules to kind of keep things going. All right. So in terms of the GM round, the first thing they're going to do is going to activate the monsters and attack. Those are very simple. They roll the dice and they can use upgrades, upgrade their dice just as players can, only they use these skulls. The skulls, as I showed you, they, they can come from the player's rolls. The more they roll, the more you have, and you can have as many of the skulls as you want. So if the players get a little bit froggy and they roll a lot, they give you a lot of skulls, you're in good shape. 
You have more fun times to offer in terms of your GM deck. You're going to have a hand of cards. Uh, and there's a lot of options in terms of the cards. So as you see, uh, there are extra cards and uh, there are different ones that are available for different missions. So then three and eight. And uh, so you see that there's a lot of variety in what the GM is going to do. And it's going to be uh, very tailored to each scenario. But this is a basic uh, hand of cards. And you're going to play, you're going to be able to draw a card and play a card for free uh, every single turn. So then you look at what you have. Let's say I wanted to play Disruptive Momentum, uh, Dreadful Momentum. I would uh, discard that and draw three cards. <laughs> Just in case I want some more options. You can use the skull tokens. Uh, so if you have a lot of them, you can uh, play extra cards and also draw extra cards. So if you really have a lot of cards, you have a lot of flexibility in what you can do. Uh, be careful though, because you can't play more than one named card in a round. So then I could not play two dreadful momentums for lots of cards. Otherwise my turn would take a long time. <laughs> Uh, an example of an offensive card, Abrupt cave -in, place three rubble tokens on any passage, kind of harrying uh, the passage of the Goonies, and there's all sorts of effects like that. In addition, you'll notice that many of the cards have a react function. These do not cost a skull. In this example, after a Goonie moves through a passage, place a rubble token on that passage, uh, you can react to the Goonies as they're going, so it gives you a, a reason to pay attention to what the Goonies are doing on their turn. In this particular case, you can kind of separate Goonies. Goonies are more powerful when they're together, weaker when they're apart, so a lot of the cards uh, work on separating Goonies, wearing them down, getting rid of their wish tokens, uh, etc. And this is the star of the show. If you are the GM, this is the Hourglass, uh, which represents uh, your ability to kind of fast forward the end game. Uh, what happens is as you do bad things to the characters, including reduce them to zero health, I mentioned before that Goonies do not die, never say die, when they reach zero health. However, a more precious resource is wasted, which is time. So uh, this is super cool in terms of the product uh, stuff, but then every time a Goonie dies, you're going to fill the hourglass. If you're able to, you, to do two, three, and four uh, in terms of filling the hourglass and you start the turn with the, the hourglass is empty, at least on the top, then you will win. That is what the GM is going for. Another way that they can make that happen is with these cards. Uh, anything with an hourglass will be able to proc uh, what they call an end is nigh roll. So sometimes there'll be some there'll be some game conditions that will let you do it for free. So that's a, a goal that you can have, try to get the game condition. Uh, you know, so so this in this case, uh, Goonie has no wish tokens, so you might want to do things to spend their wish tokens in order to say, ha ha, I'm going to do my uh, end is nigh roll. Or if you have a ton of GM tokens, just you know, spend two of them and get that going. You will take uh, three simple dice, but if you have the skull tokens you can upgrade them and if you're a pro you can upgrade them all the way up to the best rolls and if you roll and get two successes then you are able to move that this is a terrible right here uh, i just rolled something terrible <laughs> one success i didn't move anything but at least i got a uh, skull to get for the next time that i want to do that and so that is a full round as play proceeds, the Goonies are going to be traveling to and from the different rooms, depending on the map that is laid out for the particular scenario. There are shaky bridges. There are secret passages to be found, uh, depending on what the scenario says are the secret passages uh, and the way to proc them. There are rubble that you can find. There's different piles of treasure. There are also different tiles that you can uh, use. Uh, to make the board different depending on the scenario. So then uh, different scenarios are going to have different tiles. Uh, there is a lot of space uh, in the design in this one board to have very, very different styles of adventures. I can honestly say, having played all nine scenarios, that each scenario does feel uh, markedly different from the previous one. Not so much in terms of what the Goonies do, because the Goonies are pretty stable in what they do, but in terms of how the board operates and what you can discover that uh, there's a ton of new adventures waiting for you in Goonies. Never say die. It all starts here. It may be your last weekend together. This time next week, bulldozers will be flattening the goondocks. 
to make way for Mr. Perker's new country club, unless by some miracle you can save it. Rifling through Mr. Walsh's private pirate artifacts in the attic, you'll find an old treasure map and a doubloon with three curious holes in it. The map leads to One-Eyed Willie's treasure. Legend has it that Willie escaped the British Armada after stealing treasure from the king. They finally caught up with him and trapped the ship, the Inferno, in a cave. His crew dug tunnels through the cave and set booby traps to protect the treasure. Then Willie went treasure mad and killed his crew in fear that they would steal his loot. If Willie's rich stuff is still out there, maybe you can save the goondocks. You follow the map to the coastline and discover the holes in the doubloon line up perfectly with the lighthouse, Haystack Rock, and the lighthouse lounge restaurant. The map is pointing towards the restaurant. Unfortunately, the Fratellis, the notorious crime family, have been using it as their hideout. You arrive just as they are about to leave, so now is the chance to sneak in. The map and the smell of ice cream guide you to the basement, where you happen upon a small entrance hidden in the fireplace that leads to the caves below. Quick! The Fratellis have returned! Scramble down the hole before they can catch you. It all starts here. Adventure 1. The Lighthouse Lounge Emerging from the tunnels beneath the Lighthouse Lounge, you get the sense that maybe the map really does lead the treasure. There's no time to waste. The Fratellis will catch you any minute. Make your way through the caves and see if the map really does lead to Willie's rich stuff. That is flavor text for telling me that the goal of the game is to make it through the caves and search of legendary treasure. <laughs> Just go in there, search for the treasure. You don't know what you're going to find, but we're going to go for it. The GM objective is to start a GM round with all four sand tokens at the bottom of the hourglass. That one is pretty common. All right, we are ready to begin. Check out these minis for Data and Chunk, who are my uh, intrepid adventurers today. Uh, they are going to start in the initial room. So I have one room over here, there's a start, and then there's the unexplored token, which is basically GM way of saying, go that way. <laughs> All right, uh, so Data is going to start. Data has good search on his uh, character sheet. So pad strength, uh, dexter good dexterity, good search. Uh, Chunk has the better strength, but the worst dexterity, of course he does. <laughs> Uh, but we are going to go with Data, and we are going to search this bone pile. Uh, data has full tokens, so I would like to get off to a good start. So I'm actually going to spend one uh, search token, a witch token, to improve one of these dice. So then, uh, I don't know if I explained this in the overview. Uh, you act when you spend witch tokens, you can only improve the lowest die. So uh, in this particular case, if it was one of these. Uh, and a red, it would have to be the red that I improved, but it is too uh, blue that I'm improving, so I can improve up to the best die, which is the green. Okay, two and a skull. Skulls are bad for me, <laughs> uh, good for the GM, uh, but I got two successes, which is what I wanted. So then I get the item from the pile. The item is Explorer's Rope. Discard to pass a dexterity check without rolling dice. That's cool. There's going to be some uh, bridges at some point, some rickety bridges that require that. Uh, and I can also trade freely between the characters as long as they're in the same room, so I'm not really too worried about that. Got my second success, which is a treasure. Roller skates. Do a dexterity check. If you pass, move two times. All right. Roller skates is exactly within uh, Data's kind of skill set or kind of the uh, motif of the character, so we like it. These go away as soon as you use them, uh, and I'm going to move into the second chamber. The GM takes it away, indicates that there are that the next room is this way, and ah, two bats. Boy, that is not the way you want to end your turn. The GM has two cards, so uh, this is me kind of interjecting as the GM right now. Uh, I start with this. Uh, GM starts with as many cards as Goonies, uh, also um, character tokens. Uh, so I'm going to play Flash Flood. After a Goonie moves through a passage, place a rubble token on that passage. Ha ha! Goonies, that is no good for you. So what that does is it slows down Chunk. Chunk would normally kind of charge in and attack, but uh, he is stuck. <laughs> so he has to waste a turn. Uh, moving uh, moving the rubble 
which isn't too terrible for uh, this, you know, this character because uh, their special power is that they get to spend a wish token to upgrade two dice, but it, at least it's, it gives up valuable time. So then that is going to happen. And then, so we are going to roll. It's a double, it's a success. Uh, plus it generates a roll for more uh, tokens for the GM to use. So it's good for the GM to kind of uh, be a little bit more active, pay attention during a player's turn uh, so that, you know, they can uh, make the characters roll and make them suffer. So they go into the room, but the bats are unaffected. Sorry about that. That should be also in there. Uh, most of the rooms have these little search tokens. That's it. I've uh, this as a GM. I've successfully wasted Chunk's turn, and now it is the bat's turn to go. All right. So it's time for the enemies to attack, and I have these two handy dandy uh, character cards that the GM get. They're also on the GM screen. There's only two types of enemies that will show up in this uh, initial tutorial. Eh, not a tutorial. This is a real mission, but it's definitely simplified. Uh, so the giant rat I will encounter at some point. The bat swarms are, are a little bit more common. Uh, I am going to. Uh, if I have a wandering monster card, bat swarm's going to come. And they both say that I roll the, uh, the bad dice. <laughs> and I'm not going to upgrade. I'm going to save up my tokens. Uh, I am just going to uh, roll. Reason being the two characters have wish tokens. And they can use those for defense. So I'm not going to pour resources into something that the characters can currently easily defend. So let's just uh, harry. There's a little bit of just harrying maneuver. For now, uh, I this was attack at data that is empty. That's the same. And this is an attack at chunk. Uh, no damage, but at least I got a, a token for me. I am now up to four as the GM. All right, so now for my card play turn as a GM, I have four tokens. Uh, so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend the token because I want to draw two cards. Uh, one card for free and one card for spending the token. The next card that I drew is Falling Boulders. Place a Wandering Foe in any uh, an explored room without a Goonie, which it would be this room, the only room. Can't just plop monsters right in the middle of Goonies. I'm gonna pull a second card, another Abrupt Cave-In. Place three Rubble uh, tokens on any passage. Ooh, that is really tempting. So I already have monsters in here. So then I could uh, use my token and you know, get this buried right there. You know, I'm gonna do that. Uh, so then I'm going to lock the Goonies in as much as I can because I already have two monsters. They're not my strongest monsters, uh, but uh, you know, there's two of them there and the uh, Goonies seem to be struggling a little bit uh, with dealing with them, so let them deal with it. <laughs> attrition, attrition, trying to get the Goonies to waste their wish tokens so that I can open up, get an opening and really do some damage. But that is the GM turn, on to the next player turn. All right, we're ready for the next round of play. As a reminder, Chunk's ability is whenever Chunk spends a wish token to upgrade a die, he may upgrade two dice instead. So he is going to upgrade his strength die once. Uh, oh, by the way, they do get wish tokens at the beginning of the turn, one wish token. So they are now both full, Data and Chunk are at three. Uh, Chunk is going to spend one of those wish tokens to get two. Two of the best dice. Ugh, <laughs> man, that's terrible. Uh, so then that is uh, one of the bats is going to take one damage and he is going to try to do another damage, another two damage. There you go, he does the two damage, he kills a bat. Uh, but that is exactly what the GM wanted. That is exactly why the GM is putting rubble tokens in the way uh, to get extra rolls going. So that is now up to four GM tokens, and we shall see what the GM does with that. <laughs> so while Chunk is heading off the monster, Data is going to rummage through the stuff and see if he finds uh, something useful that might get them through this adventure or this little encounter a little bit easier. So then Data is going to spend a wish token and is going to upgrade to the better die right there. Uh, Data is a little bit afraid. Uh, actually, you know what? Data's not that afraid. He's going to spend two wish tokens. <laughs> what am I talking about? It's Data. He has no idea what's going on, especially when it comes to life and uh, limb or something like that. So he's going to spend two. He's going to rummage through, see what he gets. Uh, he got one success. And so 
Uh, that is going to be one item. Let's see if the item is useful at all. Candles. Discard to remove or place the three rubble tokens on an adjacent passage. Uh, that is cool. Uh, because I have three rubble tokens right here. Does Data want to use it? Data does not know what is going to happen with uh, the next turn. And there's only one act. He only has one action left. So let's save it uh, to, uh, for next turn uh, or to see what happens. By the way, unbeknownst to the players, but known to the GM, uh, this is the room where if the Goonie rolls three or more successes when searching the pirate stash token, place a secret st a passage in room to room four, which would have been here. But uh, Data did not roll the three successes, so the GM cackles silently to himself. They have to go the longer way through. So Data is going to move and is uh, going to help this out over here. Uh, going to roll his two dice. He only has one wish token left, so he's going to save that for defense. He's going to roll, and he's going to get one damage. So we have a wounded bat over here, and we are now uh, in the GM turn. Uh, I am not going to upgrade this. I'm just going to go ahead and attack. Uh, doing one damage, that damage is going to be towards Data. Uh, data, that does cost Data a wish token, and now Data has no wish tokens. Which is great! <laughs> so then I am going to look at my cards. My cards is Falling Boulders. I could put a Warning Monster in the room. Or I can uh, choose a foe. Each foe gets one action. But first I'm going to draw a card. See what happens. Each Goonie must discard a Wish Token. Alright, so uh, I have Data who has no Wish Token. So I'm going to play Daunting Vigor. Uh, I, that foe is going to take an action. It's a little bit of a waste because I could have activated two monsters, but I see it opening. So I have four wish tokens or four GM tokens. I'm going to spend two of them leaving, leaving me with two and I'm going to upgrade and I'm going to go after data. Okay. That's not terrible. Uh, I get one of my GM tokens back and I do a precious damage to a Goonie. That's actually kind of, um, difficult. Uh, in terms of the Goonies to recover from, there aren't that many items that recover uh, health. They don't have it as a ability. They have to search piles for it. So if I, as long as I can get uh, damage on a Goonie as a GM, I'm happy. All right, I'm back and Chunk has had enough of this. <laughs> I'm going to get two wish tokens for my characters. Uh, Chunk is going to spend one of them, uh, get the maximum dice. Remember that Chunk's special power is that he could spend one wish token to upgrade twice. And he is going to attack and take out this bat, finally. All right, so then Chunk is looking at that. He's going, I want to get in there. He's going to spend two another wish token to upgrade his strength dice. This strength check is basically the same thing as attacking a bat. He's going to uh, try to uh, clear it out all by himself. Uh, Data has the candles that can get rid of that, but it is not Data's turn, and they did not trade. It still belongs to Data. So he's just going to, uh, Chunk's going to just put some muscle into it. Here we go. One. That was not what I wanted. <laughs> uh, that was, I was on a, a little bit of a momentum streak over there, taking out the bat. I was hopeful that I can uh, strike and get rid of these things. Uh, alas, that is for naught. All right, so Data is impatient. He is utterly lacking in care and very curious. These are terrible combinations. <laughs> so he is going to ask Brand for some help. Uh, flip face down to add a that, that die to any strength check. Uh, so then the teenager is going to, that's it. Uh, they are, this doesn't come back until the GM uh, does the sand token thing. So uh, this isn't uh, as responsible a use as it could have been, but he is going to try his best. Uh, so then he is going to roll three dice and hopefully get two successes for his turn. He get three successes. All right. So now he is going to remove all the rubble. And so Data is going to uh, go into the, the tunnel, usually to end your turn moving. That's a terrible idea. But Data has a brilliant idea instead. Uh, he is going to use his buckle gripper. He is going to move up to two times and then stun a foe in his room. So then he, whatever foe is in there, he's going to kind of bank that there is a foe. <laughs> he has no idea. Uh, but it's, uh, I'm role playing over here. So then he is going to move in here. Uh, he is going to discover it. And whatever foe is in there, ah, giant rat, there is a foe. You're stunned. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting this moving over here. The GM puts a passage over here to indicate that this is the next room to enter. Uh, and then that is the turn for the good guys.
So the GM doesn't have much to do here. Uh, just going to stand up the monster because it was stunned. It is not going to be able to go this turn. All right, the GM has two cards and is going to draw a third. The GM has three tokens. He's feeling a little bit out of sorts. Uh, ooh, Daunting Vigor. For each Goonie in the game board, choose a foe. Each foe takes one action. I like the sound of that. So then uh, I am going to use the Bone Chilling Cackle for each Goonie to discard a wish token. Both of them have one wish token, and they are going to discard down to zero. And so I am going to spend one of my uh, skulls. I now have two left as a GM, and I am going to use Daunting Vigor again. For each Goonie on the game board, choose a foe. Each foe takes one action. I'm going to attack here. Uh, and Data is open and has no and uh, has one wound. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. I'm going to spend both of these to upgrade uh, to the better dice. Uh, this is pretty nasty of me, but this is illustrating that, uh, you know, as a GM, I am not just a facilitator of fun. I am going after the Goonies. And I'm going to try to do as much damage as I can. What? Yes! <laughs> Take that, Data. Ow! He is down to two hit points. Uh, has taken four damage, two more damage, and uh, he would reset. He would be totally fine, but I get to use, uh, do the one hourglass sand out of four, which is a really, really good thing uh, for the GM. All right, so I'm going to show this uh, once uh, just to show that I am putting the wish tokens down uh, and also that one item is used out of five. Uh, so these are, you know, they, they have enabled movement and attack and that kind of thing. I'll uh, show you uh, all these things as they play out. I have a feeling I'm going to be using all these <laughs> before the adventure is done. All right, so Chunk is really mad. He is going to go in there, guns blazing with his uh, token, leaving him with zero, but he has full health, so he doesn't really care. Uh, and he is going to roll against the rat. He's going to try to take it out. Uh, the rat has four hit points, so it is a little bit harder to take out, but Chunk doesn't know that. <laughs> Two damage. Very, very good. Uh, so then we are going to put that over here. We're going to do two damage. All right, so Data uh, is not liking the way he feels. He is going to play Bully Blinders, stun all foes in your room. Uh, so he is going to stun the rat again. And then as another action, he can rest and he is going to get another wish token. So now he has two. Uh, so that will hopefully do a little bit of defense so that the, <laughs> get a little bit of a break here. And that's the player's turn. For the GM turn, uh, the monster is going to just stand up. Uh, the, the GM is frustrated. No! <laughs> you can't be fighting like that. Uh, the, the GM did not roll any skulls. So he only has he only gets one skull at the beginning, and that's really terrible. Uh, for all that rolling, the, the one thing that the Goonies have done is, is avoid, uh, at least this round, a, a lot of skulls. So he only has one, and I only have one card. Ugh. All right, so I'm going to draw another card. Collapsing floor. Place a wandering uh, foe in any unexplored room, or uh, any explored room. So I have the same card. I could play it. Uh, the reason why they're different names is because they have different reacts. And also, there's a rule that you can't play the, the card with the same name twice, the same turn. So if I wanted to place two Wandering Monsters, I could. I only have one token, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to uh, play one, the Collapsing Floor, and I am going to put a bat in the room over here. That is the GM turn. All right. Uh, Chunk gets his Wish Token. They both get Wish Tokens. Data's at three, and I think Data's going to stay at three <laughs> for a while. <laughs> All right, Dave, but uh, Chunk doesn't care. Uh, he wants to take out this rat. Uh, so we are going to roll and we are going to get nothing. Oh my God. Oh no. And Chunk has not, Chunk has nothing going on. So uh, we are, uh, Chunk is just in a battle rage, frothing at the mouth. Ah, oh, giant rat, you must die. Protect my friend. Protect my friend. One damage. Wow. All that. <laughs> Oh, man. And the other thing is I didn't get any items that help in combat. So I'm really stuck over here. So it is one health left. Data, the last thing Data wants to do is fight this thing. Uh, so <laughs> he's just going to have to. Uh, and I got a bat behind me. Oh, good Lord. Oh, man. So uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. 
All right, so Data sees that Wandering Monster over there. He doesn't like it. So he is going to use Pinterest of Peril, his third item. Do a three uh, attack to a foe in, a, in, in your room or an adjacent room for each success, deal two damage. This is an undamaged monster, and it is headed in there to attack. So he is going to launch the Pinterest of Peril at it and hope to do two damage, not spending any wish tokens. But I think he's calculating that he'll get two damage on three uh, D8. So you've got some uh, double sides over here. Come on. Odds are with me, right? <laughs> Terrible. Oh, my gosh. Uh, did not count on the fact that there were so many empty uh, things to do. My gosh. Uh, so he is going to just sit on his tokens and hope to do one damage to the rat. And he does one damage to the rat. At least the rat is dead. The monster goes, going to go in there. Uh, the GM has two tokens, uh, but data is not open. And uh, so the GM is going to uh, just kind of save it. Again, a battle of attrition. Uh, and it's just and it's going to go after Chunk, who has no wish tokens for defense. And the GM gets a skull and does one point of damage to Chunk, an actual point of damage. There you go, my lovely. Uh, you are <laughs> going to warm you up for a little bit of combat, too. All right, so the GM has three tokens total and one card, uh, this Falling Boulders card. So then I am going to pick another Falling Boulders. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to play a card. Uh, and uh, doing the Wandering Monster thing, um, I mean, they're about to, the Goonies are about to proceed into that room. So that uh, summoning a Wandering Monster uh, in this room, I have a feeling that it would just trail. So... Oh, man. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend the token to draw another card, give myself another option. Willie's Deceit. If each Goonie has two or more damage, do an end is nigh roll. Oh, I'm so close. Oh, Chunk. <laughs> Why can't I get make that happen? And I only have two uh, of these tokens anyway to upgrade. So I'm going to, now that I have the Willie Deceit as a GM, I'm going to save up uh, my tokens a little bit more. So I think I'm going to uh, pass turn and then move on to the next. All right. So we are going to move this along. So I'm going to have it unexplored a room over there. Uh, Data is going to ignore the bat, leave it to Chunk. Uh, and he is going to move into this room. Uh, reason being that we they don't have enough items. <laughs> they want to actually uh, you know, get some items and get this thing going. So then the unexplored token disappears. There is a search pile in this room. But unfortunately, there's another bat. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, well, and we, uh, he already did his stun. So he is going to uh, use this one, Slick Shoes. Uh, place the Slick Token in your room. Foes that move into the room with the Slick Token uh, lose that round's attack action. Just going to remember that the Slick Token is there. Uh, and that is going to be... Uh, well, that's not going to be Data's turn. Actually, it is. Uh, because the Slick Shoes do cost an action. And so I'm just going to hunker down. Uh, so then Chunk is going to move. Uh, and he is going to try to take out a monster. So he did get a wish token. The wish token. He's going to spend that wish token. Uh, and he is going to try to do three damage. This is going to work at some point, man. I'm going to do a, a damage in one hit. Oh, good lord. Uh, only two. Uh, so that monster is alive. He was hoping, to, uh, hoping beyond hope that he could... <laughs> Uh, take a monster out in one hit. That is his dream to do. So the bat comes in. The bat somehow slips on oil on the ground. Or uh, maybe he just uh, reacts from the smell. So then he is going to slip and he is going to lose his attack action. But this one is going to attack. Chunk, again, uh, Chunk does not have any wish tokens. So he is going to uh, stay open. So uh, actually the, the GM is going to spend a token. And I am going to upgrade one die see if i can get a little bit more damage on chunk two damage beautiful all right so the gm is now cooking with gas over here and yes there is a passage over there the gm should not forget that so gm has three cards and now i have the willies to see card uh, if each goonie has two or more damage i've now fulfilled that which is what i upgraded the die for but i only have two tokens uh, that's not going to do me much good because I could only upgrade two dice on this roll. I need two successes, so I want a, cu a couple of more tokens. 
uh, in order to do the best with this Will You Deceit roll. So I am going to pick a card. Uh, GM, Dreadful Momentum. Draw three cards. That is perfect. Uh, so I am going to uh, discard that, and I'm going to draw three more cards. Sweet. Sinkhole. Place the pit token in any explored room. Spooked. Place a wandering foe in any room without a goonie. I already have that. And another sinkhole. Uh, all right. So I could spend a token on one of these cards, but I think I'm going to hold on to it. Uh, the GM has five uh, card limit, and right now I have six. So I am going to... Uh, I'm actually going to discard one of these sinkholes because, you know, having multiples of a card isn't as optimal as I would want it to be. All right, so Data is weighing his options. He sees that succulent other room. He sees that he has all three of his wish tokens. Chunk has one wish token. Uh, he really wants to go in there. <laughs> he wants to figure out how could every single room have enemies in it, darn it. Uh, Data's curiosity gets the best of him. Uh, Chunk goes, no, what are you doing? We have two in front of us. You could take care of that. Go for it. So then Data is going to go into this room and explore it. And to Data's surprise, there is actually no monster in that room. As you enter the cave, something catches your eye. It's a backpack. You bend down to pick it up, only to come face to face, face to skull, that is, with a skeleton crushed beneath a large boulder. All right, so I got this token down with the two rubble. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. Data is, uh, he is really curious. <laughs> he really wants to search this bone pile. So he is going to do so. Uh, so he has his his wish tokens. He's going to spend one. He's not uh, dumb to leave himself without wish tokens. So he's just going to do the one. Uh, so he is going to try to get as many successes as he can. He gets one success, unfortunately. and But that does result in an item. And you can have an unlimited number of items. Explorer's rope. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's not going to help out. Uh, and uh, it does trigger the GM is going to use a react card. After a goonie takes a search action, each goonie in the room must pass a dexterity two check or take two damage. Uh, ugh. Uh, so the dexterity is... Uh, right there and is going to try to pass it and it does he does not pass not only does it not pass it generates the, a token for the gm boy that's pretty terrible so data does have two wish tokens going to spend one wish token the gm is going to get a skull giving the gm three skulls to warm up for that willie's uh willie's deceit roll that is coming well, I turned that face down. That was disappointing. <laughs> that could have been better. And Chuck was like, was it worth it? What are you doing? Ah! <laughs> so Chunk has, again, one wish token. So he is going to try to take out uh, the creature in front of him. He's not going to spend the wish token. He has to, spend, uh, has to do a little bit of defense over here. Uh, so then he is going to try to take it out. He does take it out. Uh, all right, let's get that on screen. Uh, there you go. But generates yet another uh, skull for the boss. So the GM uh, is heard uh, in the background somehow, cackling a little bit. Uh, Chunk has a decision. He can go defense or offense. Uh, he has yet to take out a monster with one roll. He theoretically could with two, uh, th the green, because he'd be able to do that. But that would leave him without wish tokens. Uh, and there are only one, two, th well, three out of 12 sides have the double bone. So is he going to get froggy? No, he's not going to get froggy. He's going to rest and he's going to get another wish token. <laughs> is what he's going to do because he already has three points of damage. Uh, the GM goes womp womp. <laughs> I was really hoping he would take the big, the big shot. He's not going to. So I'm just going to roll uh, and try to get some more resources uh, drained from the from the peoples it is one damage and so chunk loses one wish token both characters now have one wish token left all right so the gm is going to get a, a token uh putting him up to five and is going to draw a card flash flood place the flooded token in any explored room uh not a bad card to have but i think i'm gonna go for it uh, I'm going to go for a Willie's Deceit roll. It is free if each Goonie has two or more damage. Uh, and so I don't have to spend any tokens to do it. Here is the dreaded Hourglass. Normally as a GM, I would roll these three. But I'm going to spend all five of my tokens. I'm going to get almost a max roll. 
I need to have two successes. If I have two successes, then I can progress the hourglass. That is two successes and a uh, skull back, which is perfect. Uh, so I get to progress this one. I don't get anything special, but I'm one fourth of the way to victory finally. And the characters have some damage, so I'm feeling pretty good about being able to progress that a little bit further. One thing that does happen though, is whenever the GM game sand, a teenager is like, what? <laughs> We're running out of time. I better get a move on. So brand is now operational once again. All right, we are back. Uh, and they so now uh, they are feeling pretty good. Both Goonies, uh, they got Wish Tokens at the beginning of the turn. They now both have two. Uh, uh, Chunk is going to spend one. He's going to try to do what he's been trying to do the whole time. Take out a Goonie. Take out a Bat in one swing. Come on. Uh. <laughs> one. And is he going to do the dumb thing and just take it out? Yes. Uh, he is going to try to do two damage on one roll. And he does two damage on run roll, but he does get a, a, a skull for the GM. So a bittersweet victory against the bat. <laughs> Ugh. So that is two uh, attacks by Chunk, two actions by Chunk. Uh, Data is going to search. So let's see. So Data is, uh, he is going to spend... He's going to hold on to his wish tokens because he is still fragile and he's still aware of his fragileness. Uh, so he's going to uh, roll that and he is going to... Oh, the GM is cackling inside. Finally, you are, you are cooperating with me to give me my tokens. Does get two. Uh, so that's right there. Uh, he is going to get an item. The item is Rock and Tune. Discard to take an additional action. That's nice. Uh, that, that could have come in useful a little while ago. He is going to realize that he missed something when he uh, searched the bone pile. A.K.A. the GM missed it the first time, so I'm going to make up for it now. <laughs> After looking through the backpack, you find a wallet. It's Chester Copperpot. Around his neck is a skull-shaped key. There you go, copper bones. Keep an eye out for secret places to use this. All right. Uh, that means that uh, <laughs> I don't know the secret place yet, but I have Chester Copperpot's uh, legendary treasure. So Data is going to dig through the rubble. Uh, the, the, the game says that Brand can actually flip and get rid of those uh, pile themselves. But I think I want to keep Brand around because Brand is my only strength teenager. So he is going to do it himself. Uh, Data is. Data is going to be strong and mighty. <laughs> no problem, guys. I got this. All right. Uh, so the GM goes. No monsters. Uh, so it, I am just going to gain a token right there. That gives me four for the round. Uh, so that's nice. And get build the nose back up again. And I am going to pull a card. Yes. Willie's Malediction. If a Goonie has no wish tokens, do an end is nigh roll. That's nice. Uh, Chunk right now has no wish tokens. Data has two, so I want to keep an eye on that. Uh, I could, if I wanted to, play that right now because indeed a Goonie has no wish tokens. As a matter of fact, I'm going to take advantage of that. I have four, I have four upgrade tokens, so I'm liking my chances on that. So I could wait until I have maximum benefit, but I'm impatient. <laughs> And I actually uh, like the react uh, functions on my card right now. So it's not like they're going to go to waste. So I might as well use it. All right. So this is the upgrades. Uh, and I only need two successes. Oh, <laughs> no. But that's the game of Goonies. The sort of good part for me is that I can take this card and shuffle it into the deck so I can draw it again. But man, that was so disappointing. All right, we're going to get this moving now. Chunk is going to go uh, skip this thing. There's nothing but rope in there anyway. Who needs rope? Uh, one, two. So we are going to uncover another search pile, and we're going to get two more bats. Ah! And the GM is going to strike. So then we are going to do both react functions. I can play as many of these as I want. After Goonie moves through a passage, place a rebel token on that passage. Beautiful. Thank you for falling into my trap, said the spider to the fly. Boom. <laughs> yes. Uh, so now Chunk is in, the, in a room alone with two rats. 
However, here is something that the GM forgot. Brand is now operational and can remove rubble. It says in room number six, if Brand is active, he can remove rubble. So data, data remembers with his brains that yes, for a free action, I don't have to take this anymore. <laughs> no more. We are going to walk in there and we are going to use the bully buster. Bully buster says do a three attack, which is the, the highest attack you can possibly do. Uh, to a foe in your room for each success, deal two damage. We are not messing around, people. Ah! I need to take them out. Protect my friend. Yes. One, two, three. Takes out a whole bat by himself. That is completely fantastic. The GM goes, no, that sounds like rules lawyering. <laughs> Brand can't just take any rubble out of there. Well, it specifically says, Brand removes the rubble from this bridge. No matter where the rubble came from. So they're going back and forth, arguing rules. Meantime, it is the hero's call, hero's decision. So it counts. <laughs> the GM is salty. So he only has the one monster. He has no tokens. Well, he has one token from the draw at the beginning of his turn. Uh, but it is not worth it. Chunk has a wish. He's going to go after Chunk. Uh, so then we are going to roll dice. And we are going to get a success. Removing that wish token. And getting another GM token for himself. That brings the GM up to two. But that could have been so much better. Oh, so much disappointment for the GM at once. No. <laughs> As a reminder, the GM has these two cards. Which the, the players, again, once again, they don't know they have these cards. So then I can place Wandering Monsters, basically. Uh, and then I can pull Dreadful Momentum, draw three, three GM cards. That is happening. So we are going to draw three cards. We have uh, two Abrupt Cavens. Place three Rubble Tokens in any passage. And also draw three cards and some React functions right there. Uh, a lot of Rubble. A lot of Rubble. So, yeah, that is unfortunate. <laughs> I was hoping to pull another um, sand token, but that really messed me up. Not, being, not getting that second sand token, I am not happy about that at all. A couple of admin things. Uh, first of all, I forgot to put this in. This is a rickety bridge. This takes a dexterity check to pass. Also, at the end of the turn, they finally trade. I'm going to give Chunk a rope. Uh, so now they both have rope and they can both pass dexterity checks. All right, so that is the beginning of the next turn. We have a full monster there. Uh, Chunk is feeling good. Costly at zero wish tokens. Getting the one, spending the one. And so he's going to try to take out the bat. He is very close to taking out the bat, but he, the GM gets another skull, which brings him to three. Uh, Chunk knows his role. He is there to take out uh, bats. And what? where was that? Where was that before? Ah! <laughs> Boy, that sucked. All right. <laughs> so Data is full on wish tokens, uh, is going to spend one of them to upgrade his die so that he could do the search. Uh, trying to get something good. Give me something good. Oh, yeah, that's something good. Uh, anytime you get two or more successes, you find treasure there. So the item is Bubblegum. Discard to remove one damage from a Goonie in your room and gain a wish token. Oh, yeah. Uh, going to definitely hold on to that. Uh, and then the treasure is Boarding Grenade. Discard to do a two uh, attack to a foe in your room or in an adjacent room. For each success, deal one damage to each foe in that room. Very nice. All right. So that is good. He is loaded for bear a little bit. He has one action. Data is considering moving into that room. <laughs> That would be such a goody thing to do. I have one action left. <laughs> oh, what is he doing? I don't know what Data is thinking. He can't help himself. He can't help himself. Look at that. He's going to go into the room. He has nothing else to do. And he is going to climb over the bridge using his explorer's rope, which is part of why uh, he had <laughs> felt confident to go over there because he didn't have to. Uh, he could just dance through the rickety bridge. All right, let's see what happens in this room. This room is actually not a normal room. It is the Moss Garden Wishing Well. As you step through a beautiful waterfall, the shimmer of hundreds, perhaps thousands of coins, light up the cave. Is this Willie's treasure or just a giant piggy bank? 
Could it have been this easy? No. It's just the old moss garden wishing well filled with nothing but dimes and quarters. Feeling defeated, you all want to take your wishes back and just go home. If no foes are in the moss garden wishing well, a goonie may take an adventure action to do a search check. If passed, they may find their wish and place a wish token from the supply underneath their figure. If a goonie has a my wish item card, they may discard it to find their wish without taking an adventure action, and then that is the end of the encounter. Unfortunately, there are monsters in here. Ah! <laughs> Oh, man. So that is Data paying for his indiscretions. And the GM is gleeful and is going to put down, uh, after Goonie moves through the passage, place rubble on that passage, uh, revenge of the GM. Too bad. <laughs> you are isolated. I wonder what Data is going to do. So the reason why Data felt confident moving in there is because he has items and resources to do stuff. So first of all, he's going to play a rockin' tune. This card to take an additional action. So there you go. <laughs> I have one more action. He is going to use candles. This card to remove up to three rubble tokens in an adjacent passage. Get out of here. So then we have uh, the way is clear. I have one action. Uh, I am going to use that action on rocking roller skates. Do a dexterity check. If you pass, move two times. Get out of here. Ah! Dexterity is pretty good. Uh, did get a success, but at least the GM uh, got a skull out of it. Is going to move into the room with Chunk and is going to use Bubblegum on Chunk. Discard to remove one damage from a Goonie and gain a Wish Token. So then Chunk gains the Wish Token. Maybe it is the original hole that has the Wish Token. I'm not sure. Wording is unclear, but at least uh, Chunk has some health back down from three to two. So we are ready to uh, play a little bit more defense uh, than we were than we could before. So as their action, uh, enemies could actually move an attack. So able to demonstrate that. Uh, the DM is going to just do straight attacks because uh, I really want to get to, um, hmm. I mean, the, the rats don't really do anything. <laughs> They're not that special. And I only have four tokens and Chunk does have a uh, wish token there. So, eh, yeah, I'm just going to do the rolls and hope that I can get a Willy's curse or something like that somewhere along the way. Two! Oh, baby, that changes the calculus. All right, so Chunk loses a wish token and takes a damage. Dam he is now at three. And so the other rat... Oh, actually, the rules do specify this. The, 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 the enemies cannot focus fire. They have to attack different goonies just to prevent that kind of dog pile. So uh, as excited as I was, at least I got wish tokens off a chunk and a little bit more damage. But I do have to go after Data with his two wish tokens. Uh, all right, so I'm going to go after Data uh, with, these, with these dice. Wow! <laughs> All that did was knock off Data's wish tokens, but that was pretty good. Uh, well done, rats. All right, so I'm here at the Hourglass because I think my odds of this are pretty good. So then I am drawing a card, and the card that I drew was Dreadful Momentum. Draw three GM cards. Uh, so then I am going to play that Dreadful Momentum right now. And I am going to draw three cards. One, two, three. There we go. Collapsing Floor, that's okay. Falling Boulders, that's okay. This is the one I wanted. Uh, Willie's Malediction. Uh, this is the one I tried before where a Goonie has no wish tokens doing end is nigh roll. That is true for both of them. So I am going to do the end is nigh roll for free. And I have to spend a uh, token to do that. So that leaves me four. So then that screwed me last time, but I'm going to go for it again. <laughs> Let's see what I can do. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! Let this be a lesson to you, GM people. Uh, don't ever do this roll unless you have at least everything upgraded. <laughs> ah, no! All right, so I think that is going to end up spelling doom for our intrepid GM. Uh, and uh, the, the players are going to be able to do their thing. All right, so uh, Data is going to play boarding grenade discard to do a two uh whatever that is attack to a foe in your room or an adjacent room for each success deal one damage to each foe in that room so uh data has one wish token 
and is going to discard it to upgrade a die on that. So this one, whatever successes come out are gonna count against both of the creatures. So then they both take, sorry about that, they both take one damage. That is not optimal because they have four hit points. Uh, so data, I mean, this is, this is it. Uh, so it sounds like that's the end game room. So data is just gonna go for it. Uh, unfortunately, does not have a lot of uh, resources for it, but is gonna try to take out a rat. Uh, is going to do another damage to a rat and then give a token to the GM. The GM is bitter. <laughs> It's like, I don't want your pity token. <laughs> oh my God, that is just so horrible. The GM is just like, uh, I used to be a, a DM when I was uh, playing a lot of D&D. &D, so I really feel when the DM fails that hard. Anyway, so Chunk has one wish token, uh, and is, but is not going to spend it. It's going to try, it's going to save it and is going to try to take out at least this rat. Where is that? Where was that when I needed it? Come on! <laughs> there is no such thing as dice momentum, but uh, it might be a little bit more heroic to do so. Oh, that's what I rolled, by the way. I should have rolled that on camera. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, all right, that's it. Uh, Chunk is really mad. I know I said I didn't be believe in dice momentum, but <laughs> screw it. <laughs> he has three hit points. I could do it! He didn't do it. Ugh. So these things have four hit points. Uh, this is not all that happy. Uh, I The rat is... Ugh. All right. So um, what is going to happen is the GM is going to get another token. Is going to have two. GM is going to spend both tokens. going to at least try to take out one of these uh, heroes. It is going to be data. Data of the two hit points left. Uh, the rat is going to go for data. And it's going to take data out. Yes! Finally! So then what happens is uh, data is going to have the six hit points, is going to wipe them, uh, and just come back, uh, you know, as normal. However, the GM finally gets his reward. It finally is able to uh, move the sand timer. And moving the sand timer does trigger a teenager back. So the GM is half winning. <laughs> Even the, the GM would have won had he nailed both of those rolls. Get out of here, blank dice. But them's the breaks. All right, the GM goes, pulls a card. Uh, Willie's Malediction. Same thing! Same thing! Uh, <laughs> there's only three cards left in the GM pile, so that was totally a thing that is reasonable in terms of chances. So then the, goon, they, the Goonies do not have any wish tokens. So I'm going to try this one last time. Uh, I'm going to spite... Uh, out of spite, basically. Uh, I have no tokens for this. But if I get two bones, I'm just going to scream and yell. I did not get two bones. <laughs> but I got a, a token, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be the Goonies last turn. All right. So they both are going to move in. Uh, Chunk is going to use his uh, Explorer's Rope. I'm just going to like kind of go together because this is the, basically the last turn of the game. Uh, so, uh, just to make it official, Data is going to use, or is going to roll for Dexterity, passes to get over the bridge. And now, they have to do a check. They are going to do the check with Copper Bones. Uh, according to the book, uh, they take what they call an adventure action. It's basically a special action, kind of multi-purpose, uh, in order to find what they're looking for. And they have to nail two. So, then their search checks, so Steph is going to help. Steph has been there the entire time. Uh, but they have not used her. I'm going to flip down, uh, and Data is going to look for his, uh, you know, thing. Uh, so that is an extra die over there. Only needs to get a two. Uh, got that two right there. And gets the wish. So then they are going to place a wish token under Data. And so we're finally going to do a teammate action. They both got wish tokens at the beginning of the turn. Data spends his to give Chunk a die. Uh, so then he is going to roll with three dice. The search check. The search check is successful. They both get wish tokens. After taking back your wishes, you realize that the next time you see Sky, it'll be in another town. The next time you'll take a test, it'll be in some other school. The goondocks are part of you and being forced to move is heart-wrenching. Your parents want the best for you up there, but down here, it's your time. And that's all over the second you ride up that bucket. 
Willie's treasure is still down here. And if you give up now, it'll be your last adventure together. Dun, dun, dun. It is time for the Goonies to decide to keep going. So they are going to delve deeper into the dungeon uh, and have further adventures. There are plenty more, eight more. In this adventure guide culminating in a grand finale take my word for it i've played it it is super fun so i hope you enjoy that playthrough of goonies uh the heroes are victorious uh, i pulled some punches a little bit as a gm the gm definitely could have piled on a little bit but i wanted to get to the happy ending for the sake of the playthrough but if you're playing the gm in your game uh roll up your sleeves and go for it <laughs> have some fun but until then, uh, this is Jason with the One Stop Co-op Shop reminding you that we will see you at the next stop.